Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So, we've got another repair video for you on the Nissan Pathfinder or Frontier or Navara D40? I forget the model, but anyway, uh, essentially 2008 model. Now, before we get into it, we're going to get you guys to uh, see if you can diagnose the problem. I already know what it is, but I'll, I'll give you the symptoms. So, the big boss, aka the wife, it's her rig, driving the kids to and from school in the supermarket. It gets to about 3,000, between 3,000, 4,000 RPM, and it starts hunting or starts like it's hitting a rev limiter, you sort of backwards and forwards. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Now this happens under full load, or under not quite so much full load, but under a fair reasonable amount of load. Um, at first, it was an automatic, well this is an automatic, at first I thought it may have been the automatic transmission, but I can rule that one out for you. Um, and it is not the fuel filter either. The fuel filter is not blocked. And put down in the comments, see what you reckon before you keep watching uh, the rest of the video. Um, anyway, so I did my research and all the rest of it. Yes, I am. Even though I am a diesel mechanic, I still don't know everything. So I had to get out there, do a bit of research, and. Um, I'll grab the books. So, uh, of course, the Bible. Got to have a uh, repair manual as best as you can get. If you can get the factory repair manual, even better. And I've had this book, uh, Common Rail System Diagnosing and Servicing. So. Um, get that up there, hopefully you'll be able to, and for those of you, it's just a Haynes manual, I mean it's, they're, they're not the, the be all and end all manuals, but it, it gets you out of trouble, so, also doing research on the interwebs, and of all places, YouTube, and I was reading the, having a look at the, uh, looking for R51 Pathfinder videos and all the rest of it and I come up with a bloke over in England of all places describing the same problems we had and I confirmed it in the comments because there's a few other people and it is this little bugger so I don't know if this is going to focus or not that is a fuel suction solenoid that sits on the back of the common rail fuel pressure pump or the rail uh, high pressure pump and it's just a little electric solenoid valve I'm not going to open it up just yet so I want to keep it clean and for whatever reason the little um, electromagnets or whatever it is at a certain um, voltage are not lifting or not staying um, and not energized enough that the valve keeps opening and closing all the time hence you're getting the hunting sort of um, rev limiter um, sort of action so that's our repair video for today we're going to replace this little bugger and we're going to reset the computer we're going to take it for a bit of a spin around the block see how we go so let me grab the camera I'll show you where this little bugger is now as you can see I've already made the job a little bit easier by removing the battery moving the power steering reservoir and the top plastic cover I know it's very difficult to sort of see but if you can see where the screwdriver is going it's right there so let me pan back in the scheme of things as you can see I don't have overly a great deal of room but it can be done
Now this is a job. Um, it's not going to take an overly lot of tools, like specialised tools or anything like that that are needed. Um, so it's something a novice um, or someone you know with just general servicing skills can replace this valve. without much hassle. Alright, we'll go get the air compressor, blow that off and then we'll start pulling the bits. Now for those of you that are wearing earplugs, um, earphones and all that sort of thing, just a uh, just a quick warning, you might want to turn down your sound. the electrical plug okay before we take it out I'll just show you what this little kit consists of so you've got the little suction solenoid valve there a sealing o-ring some brand new cap head screws the Allen Allen key style cap head screws and another little gasket, so these are genuine Nissan, and just have a, there we go. For those of you that are wondering, that's the part number. You have to excuse my shaking hand. Um, now I did buy this off of eBay. Uh, and genuine Nissan was like 360 odd dollars Australian. Um, I think this kit was about 121 Australian. That's with free delivery. It come from Sydney and I'm in Melbourne, Australia. Success. First thing I want to do, before we take it out of the packet, as with anything, just have a quick look, make sure it's got the right connections, right bolt pattern, um, all that sort of deal. Um, they were both look pretty much identical. So, yeah, so in the workshop, they also use oil, engine oil, that sort of stuff. I prefer a little bit of Vaseline for white grease. That's what's in the cup. It's a bit dirty, but. As I say to the young apprentices that I have working with me on a daily basis, lube is your friend. It's cheap. And it might save you quite a lot of dollars and heartache in the long run. So that's what we're going to do. First of all, we best check if that gasket's, the old gasket is still on. If it hasn't been destroyed, we might just leave it on there, we won't, we won't um, disturb it because it will still seal. Nine times out of ten you can get away with doing that with a paper gasket. Well, eight times out of ten, something like that anyway. So anyway, let's have a quick, quick look and then we'll uh, get into it. Okay, so having fat fingers, it's a little bit difficult to get this little cap screw in just that. So get a little bit of the white grease. I don't know if that'll come up on me on my finger. Just put a bit in the uh, like so. 
and then as you can see doesn't drop out sort of sticks there um, you can use uh, normal grease and that sort of thing but because we've got this here handy we'll do that and then we'll get this cap screw in Oh yeah, what a pain in the butt. But anyway, that's my fat fingers. Can't quite get in there. So let's get this connection on. Now if you're liking this video and all the rest of it, don't hesitate, jump on there. Jump on the old uh, subscribes and um, you know, comments and ring and bells and all that sort of deal. Um, it all helps this channel grow. Um, and in turn, it, it will help me bring you more content that um, you, you guys will enjoy. Now, all up, this job probably take... course it's taken me a bit longer because I'm filming and you know trying to get camera angles and blah 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 um, we're probably looking around about 20 minutes to half an hour to get this little valve on and off and judging by the book um, probably looking somewhere around about um, well, another 15 minutes something like that you know, if, if you're used to doing just your general oil changes and that sort of thing, spare a little bit extra time, don't rush. Um, put aside an hour, hour and a half, something like that. Yeah. Make sure you do all your research first before you go attacking a, attacking a job, even if it's small like this one. Still doesn't hurt, still doesn't hurt. I'll get these buttoned up and I'll see you in the cabin of the car. Okay, so we've got everything buttoned up underneath the hood. Uh, we're going to put our little ABD2 scanner in. The race is done. So, let's start this thing up. Well, keep my little scan tool in the thing. I've got my books here, just in case. Let's go for a bit of a drive. Better pull the shed door down first. I know it's not a very good camera angle, but let's let's go for a bit of a spin. And we'll see what we can find. We'll see if this thing will. We've got two chances. It's either going to fix it or it's going to keep acting up. So let's go. bit of uh, the test drive and outro and all the rest of it so but, you know, it, it is what it is but what I can tell you is the test drive went great it looks like the uh, that little solenoid uh, fixed the problem so happy days there happy wife happy life as it goes and uh, yeah so look if you're having issues similar to what was described at the start of the video 
might be worth you having a bit of a look at that fuel suction solenoid anyway oh also too i do have to apologize um i've been really wanting to get stuck into the skyline our r34 project casper but uh as usual you know family commitments work commitments all the rest of it it's just not enough hours in the day so but we will be getting there just got to be patient and bear with me a little bit so anyway what are you waiting for go get your hands dirty i'll see you next video